Hey guys, what's up? This is Steven from Chaotic Gaming and I'm here to talk about Ryzen and why Ryzen is our future for gaming. Hey guys. Okay, so let's start. Uh, alam nyo na na religion tong word na to. Ryzen, Ryzen, Ryzen. What is Ryzen? So, maybe a lot of you know what Ryzen is. It's an AMD processor na it just came out this year. Um, on March 2, that's the Ryzen 7. And um, so what's with Ryzen? And why are, was it, there's a lot of hype about Ryzen. Is that even a good processor? Does Intel now have a competitor again in the market? And how does, how well does it perform? And anong meron sa kanya? Bakit pag nag-search ako sa internet, eh, Ryzen, Ryzen beats Intel, Ryzen is good. Bakit ang Ryzen ay future for gaming. Now, a lot of you guys own Intel's processor and some of you AMD. But before we start, I just want to let you know that I am not an AMD fanboy. I am not also an Intel fanboy. I select uh, products based on what's good in the market. So, nag ako na ang processors and I was looking for performance versus value, which is price, you know, um, bang for the buck and it seems that Ryzen did something good this year um, okay so before we start uh, talking about Ryzen I'd like to tell you uh, I'd like to go to the topic regarding DirectX 12 and why DirectX 12 is a uh, plays a huge important role sa Ryzen okay so DirectX 12 um, in the region to DirectX 9, 10, 11 and 12 nakikita nyo na yan like since uh, World of Warcraft I mean, Warcraft 3, yung maunang panahon ng mga 10 years ago. So, ano nga ba talaga yung DirectX 12? Ba't nakikita mo yan sa video card? So, uh, DirectX 12, uh, I mean, DirectX is a, a, a API. So, kung explain ko sa inyo na layman's term, parang library to kung paano mag-usap ang hardware at saka software. Uh, alam ko, tumating din na rin sa mga tanong, nyo, tanong sa isip nyo dati, bakit ang PC ay napakamahal? And yet, uh, but hindi niya mahabol yung performance ng PlayStation 4 or A Xbox or PS3 or Xbox One nung mga dating you know mga questions dati pero yet ang mura lang kung i-compare mo yung price so ang pinaka dahilan dun guys is because of the API uh and direct X, X kasi is a high end uh you know a library uh, kaya ang nangyayari dito is that yung direct X 9 10 and 11 nung yung mga laro na yan, eh, ma medyo mabagal na kukuha yung performance kasi ang dami pang pinagdadaanan ng hardware bago niya makausap si software or vice versa. Ngayon, uh, lumabas ang Windows 10 like 2015 and uh, kasama na ng Windows 10 ang DirectX 12. So, anong benefit ni DirectX 12 sa games? I mean, there are only a few games in DirectX 12 that came out bilang lang sila at uh, bakit importante ang DirectX 12 sa Ryzen. So, to start off, um, papakita ko sa inyo yung DirectX 11 and bakit ang um, bagal ang DirectX 11 and why DirectX 11 is slowing down the games and hindi mo magamit ng fully yung capable na system mo. Okay guys, so itong picture na nakikita nyo ngayon, this is an AMD picture chart on how uh, the CPU utilization is being utilized on DirectX 11. So, kung may kita mo, ang sample dito ay 8-core CPU and they are using an API na DirectX 11. So, yung pink na nakikita nyo yan, that's the game code. So, like yung required um, code ng game. So, let's say that's the game engine. And then, uh, yung red, yan yung DirectX 11 na runtime so yan yung library niya and uh, yung yung blue that's the DirectX 11 driver na ini-install niyo kung ititignan niyo eh ang laki nung blue na linya so kung iisipin niyo ang daming ang laking delay ng ginagawa ng DirectX 11 bago niya may provide dun sa user or yung sa screen nyo or anything that kind of the output so yeah yan ang DirectX 11 dahil sa sobrang daming cores hindi ma distribute ng um, hindi ma distribute ng, ng trabaho yung workload equally 
And again, this is an 8 core. And if you look at the core 7 and then core 8, hindi nagamit. Diba? Nasayang yung core 7 and core 8. I mean, saan napunta yun? So, you, you bought an 8 core CPU para sa high-end game and then hindi mo naman nagamit. And look at the frame rate. It's only 29 ms equals to 34 frames per second. So, nasayang, di ba? So, that's DirectX 11. So, ang nangyari, ginagawa natin ng trabaho is nasa Core 1. Instead, na distribute niya sa lahat ng Core 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, sa lumang understanding ng mga tao na kapag madami tayong processors is that lahat ng processors natin naghahati-hati ng trabaho. Pero, hindi. Uh, actually, kung hindi siya game and uh, ibang application siya na hindi ko magamit ng DirectX, yes, possible siya na ma-distribute pero pag nasa game siya na gumagamit ng library then it's not gonna work correctly as you can see this is an example and hindi siya nagagamit ng mabuti so uh, let's go ahead and go to DirectX 12 and paano na utilize ng DirectX 12 ang lahat ng course okay so ito ang DirectX 12 buffer so kanina again that's DirectX 11 and then this is DirectX 12 with the same specs 8 core CPU. So yeah, nakita nyo yung CPU utilization. I mean, uh, kanina hindi nagagamit yung CPU 7 and then CPU 8 or core 7 and core 8. Now, yung DirectX 12, yung library niya at saka yung driver niya eh na distribute niya equally sa lahat ng cores. Now, uh, siguro may question sa inyo regarding game code. Um Again, I'm not gonna talk about that. I'm going to talk only about the APIs. So, regardless, um, kung makikita mo, madaming nagagamit na na CPU utilization sa Core 1, and yet, even though na nabibigyan siya ng maraming trabaho, yung graphics library or API library ay naging low API overhead na. So, uh, yeah, look at the red and look at the blue. They're equally distributed. And then the delay is also less. So what what this means is that uh, the more na mabilis ang response time, eh mas maraming mafeed ang CPU sa GPU and vice versa. The more the faster the communication, the more uh, you have uh, the, the more free space you have for more CPU usage. So kung kanina 30, 30 something lang, ngayon 66 na and then with a 15 ms. And all cores are utilized. And this is the RecX 12 guys. So if you're all wondering bakit laging nananalo ang Intel sa AMD in most cases in some games as well, is because Intel is really good at single core for por performance. And as you can see today in the market, meron silang two cores and uh, four threads or four cores, four threads. Uh, this is the reason why nananalo si Intel some mga non super multi threaded games like more than six cores or eight cores games and uh, same prices. And uh, as you can see, Ryzen is offering a lot of cores um, in a cheap price compared to Intel's uh, single, you know. Um, mga onting cores nila and you know, yeah, doon bumabawi yung Intel basically so, ang next na gagawin ko is that ipapakita ko sa inyo ang comparison ng gamit ko naka, naka Ryzen 1, 1600 ako and uh, i-compare ko siya sa i7 na 7700 okay guys, so before we start uh, gusto ko lang makita muna yung Apple to Apple's comparison ng AMD Ryzen 1600 na meron ako at ng Intel Core i7 7700K and uh, as you can see the core clock is 3.6 on AMD side and on the Intel side there's a 4.5 right? look at Intel they are really good at single core performance ang taas nyan um, dati like 3 gigahertz lang ang mga processors but they managed to do it at a 4.5 which is a very high clock speed and if you look at the AMD side on the cache that's 16 MB and for the Intel it's 8 MB um, this, uh, by the way this is the total cache for all the processors now the core count as you can see in the AMD side it's 6 cores with 12 threads now um, ang 
bago pala sa AMD Ryzen is that they also apply the simultaneous multi-threading compared to hyper-threading sa Intel. Uh, ako, I'm not a scientist from AMD, pero I was always wondering kung bakit din hindi ginagawa to ni AMD dati. Maybe because of copyright, dahil ang hyper-threading ay naka-copyright sa, or they own the rights for hyper-threading, which, which AMD cannot copy. So, naka-research si AMD ng sariling way nila para makagawa ng multi-threaded cores, you know, like for single to uh, single core to two threads na parang hyper-threading na rin. And uh, if you look at the core counts for AMD again, six cores and then 12 threads. And if you look at the Intel side, you can see four cores and eight threads. And uh, if you look at the power, uh, 60dp wattage sa AMD and sa Intel Core i7, the 7th generation, 91 TDP. Uh, dito ako nagulat din kasi kung tipa pansinin mo ang laki ng TDP nung sa Intel. Well, of course, uh, ataas ng gigahertz, uh, higher clock speed, higher power consumption. Now, if you look at the price, uh, I, the lowest price I found in the Philippines is 11,120 pesos. And uh, sa Gaisamo, uh, pinakamura na binibilang ko lagi sa Gilmore is 16,995. And uh, to date, uh, ang date ngayon para ma-verify ko is again, this is July 24. Yan yung mga prices ng, uh, nasa Pilipinas ngayon na nakita ko. If there's a low, any lower price than that, then I guess there's like a thousand or 500 pesos lower than that. But again, uh, I can be wrong, but uh, look at the gap sa prices na may kita mo sa kanilang dalawa. So let's proceed with the, uh, with the benchmarks. Okay guys, so my first benchmark is the CPU-Z from MSI. So I'm using an MSI B350M for, yeah, from MSI. And uh, this is included with, uh, with their software. Not sure if this is free, but if it is, you can use this for benchmarking of your CPUs. So um, I did some benchmark for my Ryzen 5 1600. And uh, the reference clock that I use to compare the uh, you know uh, apple to apple comparison is the cpu z reference down below you can see there their uh, intel core i7 7700k and with the cpu at 4.2 gigahertz again that's the sample that, that i was um, showing earlier na kung ano yung difference na ryzen 1600 and ryzen 7700k and uh, kung titignan niyo ang single threaded performance uh, the proces yung processor ko and eh, nakakuha ng 363 points while the Intel side the 7700K they had the 492 kung makikita nyo yan now um, yes like I said earlier laging panalo ang Intel most of single threaded games or 4 kung sabihin natin 4 game 4 cores lang yung required ng game na yan hindi masyado nag-utilize ng more than that uh, yeah doon na nanalo usually ang Intel Kasi not all games right now utilizes more than four cores. Uh, they do support it. However, again, like I said earlier, if you have a 11, it's going to pointless yung multi cores. Kaya ang ginagawa ni Intel, they focus on the single threaded performance because they have an issue with uh, multi, uh, multi cores. So they don't benefit. Rather, they focus on the single threaded, which is good and wise because uh, doon nagkakaroon ng problema talaga ang DirectX 11 and later uh, earlier APIs now if you look at the CPU multi-threaded um, CPU ko ay nakakuha ng 3202, again this is uh, 1600 na Ryzen 5 um, and again I have 6 cores and 12 threads and pag nakita nyo yung multi-threading core ng Intel which is uh, 4 core and 8 threads eh, 2006 148. So guys, nakita nyo na yung price comparison kanina. Halos 11k lang ang Ryzen. And ang Intel ay almost uh, or somewhere in 16,000 or 17,000 around the market. So this is the reason why um, AMD can be doing, some, you know, is really doing something good. Kasi um, multi-cores and DirectX 12 is coming. And if DirectX 12 is going to be utilized in their future games then all of these multi-core 
supported games are going to take benefit from it. Now, uh, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't have any benchmark for for this uh, for this video, but there's a huge update from Rise of the Tomb Raider and the like X12 patch, and it made a huge difference. Na nagagamit lahat ng CPU cores this uh, equally sa mga cores yung trabaho. So let's proceed with the 3D mark or a PC mark uh, benchmark, and I'll show you that um, now. Till I get up Time is barely on our side I don't want to waste what's left The storms we chase are leading us And love is all we'll ever trust Yeah, No, I don't want to waste what's left And on and on we'll go Through the wastelands, through the highways Till my shadow turns to sun rays And on and on we'll go Through the wastelands, through the highways And on and on we'll go Okay, so those are the benchmark of my 1600 and by the way those are not real scores. I am using an OBS while I am doing the benchmark so you may not see real scores but it's near and identical to scores that I have. So as you can see the DirectX 11 single threaded is uh, getting uh, a million and four hundred thousand draw calls and then the DirectX 11 gets a 2,500,000 for the draw calls. Now if you can see on the DirectX 12 it's getting 13 million draw calls. That's a, like a lot of requests being fed from the GPU, G CPU, RAM and all the system because of the amazing API the DirectX 12's offer. Now uh, for Vulkan um, well if you wanna uh, I can create a video on that on the next video so feel free to comment down below and share this video. So uh, yeah, see you guys next time. And thank you again for watching um, Chaotic Gaming Reviews. And my name is Steven. See you again later, guys. Bye-bye.